Bryce and Boom Paul for This is 50 Minute. And we got the amazing, talented, beautiful queen of queen of daytime Emmy dramas and stuff. Uh, <laughs> Demetria McKinney. We got Demetria McKinney in the building. You know, if you guys don't know her, you should know her from obviously from House Divided, of course. But if you guys don't know her, she was on so many other great black sitcoms and she can definitely sing her sing amazing so but we're not here to, we're here to talk about house divided today you know season four obviously first thing i want to ask you Demetria, is how do you feel about season four so far i'm just elated i'm i'm yo it's always been a ride and i don't know what kind of mecha- mechanical stuff is going on in dan garcia's head but the way he comes up with these storylines i'm like oh okay word word so what's gonna happen in season seven he's like yo slow down i'm not that good you know <laughs> Like, I'm just, I'm really elated that we've made it here. And thank you to all the fans and all the support. Now, going from season one to season four with your character, Carissa, how do you feel about her growth? Oh, my. She's your most dynamic character I think you've ever played, so. (sighs) Thank you. Uh, When I I first uh, read the script, I was like, oh, I'm side chicken. Okay. All right. We go, we go, that's, that'd be fun. I ain't never did that before. That'd be cool. And then when, when I off the wife, I was like, oh, we killing people. Oh, we getting money. Like this has been just such a fun, <laughs> fun, fun ride. And now I'm getting to experience my own version of Orange is the New Black. Um, and it's, I, yo, I'm living it up. Like every kind of thing I may have thought back in the back of my cranium, I'm pushing all the way to the front for Carissa. <laughs> now, so a house of divided is definitely is the longest running show on uh on all black now going into that did you expect that happening when, when you first read the script or were you glad no. just happy to be a part of i mean happy to be this character and be a part of this cast no i i never go into any project thinking oh now when we get into season seven or season eight you know like even <laughs> season three you know as an actress i understand that each project is its own thing to stand upon so you do the work in the moment that you're in you hope for the best but you prepare for the not you know what i'm saying so getting into carissa and having as much fun as i was it was like oh even if it didn't i had a great ride but i'm, I'm so very grateful that it did now one thing i know a lot of fans notice about your character is your uh, evil looks that you give like this? The no, no words said, no nothing. You just have like that look that you be like, "Yo, she really thinking of something like the most meticulous things you can think of." Like, yeah. you, obviously, what's it like practicing those looks in the mirror and then just practicing them on people? I'm sure your spouse or whatever, just being like, mm, "I got, I got to work on this role real quick," but uh, I don't know if she's acting or really doing. <laughs> There is no practice. I think that joint comes naturally. (laughs) Like I I said, you know, um, everything that I've thought in the back of my head, but I've, you know, I've calmed down because it's not the right thing to do. I've calmed down because he died on the cross. I've calmed down because my son was watching me. No, 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 no. We're going to do it all right here, right now, because it is time. Like, that's, I think that's one of the things that I love most about this character. She is unapologetically uninhibited. Like, she is the walking, talking definition of watch and find out. <laughs> Period. Yeah, yes, yes. Now, like you said, in this role, you get you get to kill people. Like, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. <laughs> this is obviously different from every other role that you have played. So what, what was it like going into this role? How did you prepare for this role? I say, because I know a lot of people didn't get to ask you that going in and you already on season four and you'd be like, yo, she like, one of the craziest chicks I've ever seen on television. So, I, 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 I did prepare and I didn't. You know, I honestly brought what I knew of that lifestyle, which ain't much. You know, I'm gangster to a degree. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but it's it's been truly collaborative because Dan Garcia comes up with these ideas. Like I said, that thing, it sparks different. Um, and he makes it so vivid. And then, you know, if we're in the moment, I'm literally just in the moment. I let the most primal things of me emerge because she is just that chick. Her thing is survival. Her thing is family. Her thing is respect. Love is a sprinkle on the cupcake. You know what I'm saying? So when you think about it that way, you move in, in, in a more insidious way, which is why, you know, those looks of, you know, I really don't give a ooh. 
you know, translate like that. So I, I couldn't prepare as much as I could for other things. You know, when Janine, I had that in my family. I understood what that looked like. With the thing I'm doing here, I'm a military brat. I understood what that looked like. I ain't never been in an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> I've never murdered anybody. I've never, you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't been involved with the FBI. I, you know, so it, it's, it's fun to experience it without any of the consequences. No doubt. Now, what were some things in season three what was something that you saw in your character as a fan that you admired the most in season three? In season three, shoot, there were so many moments. There was the, oh no, I don't want to talk about that moment. You know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to, I'm going to move into season four. The vulnerability that even this most savage, no, you know what, it is season three. The vulnerability that this savage woman was able to still find in Terrell's character. Um, as much as she done off people, took the money, made these threats, got this fortress of solitude, like she's got all of these demons surrounding her. But at the core of her, there is still this person that is capable of love and wants trust and wants companionship. And so I think that was the dopest part of season three for me, you know, just really seeing her be willing to let her guard down, even though time and time again, she's known better. Now, one thing a lot of fans probably ask, you know, in your character, as ruthless as she is, does she deserve love? <laughs> we all need love, bro. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, I think, you know, yeah, yes. I don't think that there's anybody that's not deserving of love. Now, how much of it you get, uh, the type of it you get, how long it lasts. Now that's debatable as all get out. Um, we see, we've seen that Carissa grew up in a very, very tumultuous, broken home, you know? So I think it's something that she's always looked for, but she's looked for it in the wrong places. And that's why it was so refreshing to actually see her feel like somebody saw past the grit and the grime on her and saw the beauty that was possible, even though he betrayed her. I was, ooh, I was big mad about that. You feel me? Put a cape on me. I was super mad. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Now, I want to ask you your most difficult scene to shoot during this whole season, four seasons? Easily the love scene in the cave, <laughs> period, point blank. I ain't never been so exposed in my life on camera. Um, and it was, it, was, it was beautiful how it came about. You know, Dan talked to me beforehand, um, Honesty directed it. It was wonderful to have a woman there to actually be, you know, the driving force for everything. Cause she would understand, you know, I, does this look okay? Does that look okay? Is this showing? Um, and then also, you know, Terrell Carter, I've known him. He's been like a big brother to me for the better part of 20 years. And so him playing my love interest, as much as we play and he gets on my nerves and I really want to punch him in the face. In that moment, he was my protector. You know, he made me feel the sensuality that Carissa was supposed to. And then when they yelled cut, he was the one requesting a role before I could say kick. You know, so it was one of the most tumultuous moments of my career. Again, never been that open before, um, but I felt so very protected by the team that I was with. <laughs> okay, okay. Now I wanna <laughs> ask you for Carissa in, in, um, in season four, not giving anything away. What is one thing you want the fans and yourself to see, see evolve in her in season four without giving anything away? How do I do that, man? <laughs> One of the things that I would like for you to see Carissa evolve in is love. And like I said, you know, love comes in a lot of different forms and uh, it lasts for a certain amount of time. <laughs> but after what she's just gone through in season three, I'm hoping that people see a bit of that transition back into, you know, the possibility of love. Okay, okay. Now, one thing we're going to jump off of from film to music now. Uh, speaking <laughs> of music, actually, you did a song with Music Soul Child. And I want to yes. know, did you, catch, did you catch the verses last night? And what were your thoughts? I am in Canada. 
I am missing so much, but I know music, I know music got up there and killed it, man. Like uh, being in the studio with him, I came to him actually with that song. I was like, hey, I had this idea. Can you tell me if it's a good one or not? You know, I'm sitting there nervous. He got his shades on and he's just real smooth, you know, just real smooth gliding through the room and joints. And so I'm telling him about this idea. He's like, hey, so how about I jump on with you? What do you mean? Yes. Yes, please. So, you know, if he was able to do what he did with that, just on the spot and come up with these different melodies, I know, I know what he did with that verse is, is just fire. Oh, I'm so mad. You got YouTube. You can catch it on YouTube. I'm about to. <laughs> okay. And then uh, another thing about music, man, uh, it's been four years since you put out an album. We want to know, <laughs> are you working on music? Is there any, is there any music coming in the in 2022, what can we what can we get from you from as far as music? Because you know you I are have, an amazing singer. So, oh, thank you so much for that. Um, I I definitely want to produce more music and get more of me out there to you guys in the in the truest form of me. But I have been in Vancouver between six and eight months of the year for the past three years, which is why y'all haven't seen, heard. I ain't been out nowhere on top of you know <laughs> Miss Rona, Romany streets. Right. Um, but, you know, as soon as I'm done here, I'm already in talks with some of the producers and looking forward to working with new people. So there will be new music. I just ask for y'all's continued patience. And I really appreciate the fact that y'all are asking for it. Like, <laughs> okay, now can we get a preview? What are some things you want to discuss in music moving? I mean, when you start working on a new project, what is one thing that you've been really excited to uh to, you know, sing about? <laughs> uh, you know, I've been really, really kind of, as I just said, you know, up here in Canada, I'm kind of isolated. And at first I got really, really lonely and I had to find all these different ways to kind of, you know, make these coping mechanisms. But then it got to the point where I started realizing working on self-love, this was the time. So if I can empower women, especially Black women, especially entrepreneurs, especially single mothers, if I can empower them to understand that you have to take that time to develop the relationship with yourself, we give so much. We give so much. And I know it's Black History Month. It's always, <laughs> we always do it our thug dizzle. But, um, but if I can do a couple of things that help that tired mom to come in and just press play so the husband and the kids know it ain't that time. If I can develop something that she can just press play and say, okay, this is what I'm about to lounge to to relax my mind and let me know I'm enough. Like that would be something that I would really, really like to do. Okay. And then watching house, I mean, yeah, watching house divided. I want to ask you, what are some things that you guys tackle that we should, that we should discuss more in the black community? Our affluence. Like, you know, it's it's constantly portrayed that we we have this lifestyle and we have this access and we own this much, but there's so much more that we've not only given to the world, but we do within our own communities and we do within ourselves. And also, I think it's an opportunity to inspire the people who don't know that they're capable of that. You know, if we have these conversations about generational wealth, if we have these conversations about finances and why your credit score is so important for it to be your credit score that is great, you know, lending and what that means, how you make uh, debt turn into profit, like, you know, all of these different things that I know for me, I wasn't taught. I had to learn on the go on my own. So, you know, I think shows like this where, you know, you're looking at this dude talk about Bentleys and you realize he's still got the same problems. Right. We still got the same problems, but money doesn't have to be as big a part of one. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's concentrate on raising our financial awareness and building up our, our entities that way. And then also you being an actress, you're also a fan of the show. I want to ask you, what do you think <laughs> watching the show? When you're watching it as a fan, what do you what's mostly going through like your head when you watch? Do you, is it the suspense? Is it like dang, the speculations like are is it just like, oh, I, I like my character, but I can't stand this other character, or I can't stand <laughs> my character, but I really enjoy the other characters. So what would you say? As, as a there is, there's a myriad of emotions. Like when I'm reading the script, honestly, and this goes for everything across the board, because I like to genuinely just be able to see what people are going to do. Um, I only read my stuff. Only the stuff I'm involved with. Cause you know, if you think about real life, you don't know what the backstabbers are doing no dang damn way anyway. So, you know, I don't wanna give myself any of that to kind of influence any of the decisions I'm gonna make. But the bigger part of that is when everybody else is watching it, so am I. I get to be a true fan. I get to watch Brad and them make, aren't his eyebrows immaculate? 
<laughs> I mean, I, I don't look at watch, it. <laughs> I mean, girls, y'all, ladies gonna feel me. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, you get to watch everybody do their thing and you get to watch it from such a free space because you don't have these preconceptions of what they should do and how they might say it and what this is gonna lead to. Like I get to actually really watch it as a fan. Now, I love, love, love Miss Lisa Ray but I look forward to the opportunity to get to fight her on camera again. That was so very fun. Um, you know, working with Terrell Carter, like I said, 20 years in it, like I got big brother on the set. I know I'm going to have to do babysitting. And then when they yell action, I'm going to have to submit a little bit, you know, like it's just, it's just really cool to truly be a fan of the people, which makes you an even bigger fan of the show because I get to see the people in their true form. And then their transition into the, whoa, dang it. That is this show. Yeah. I'm all in. No doubt. Well, uh, like I said, you know, we got Miss Demetria McKinney on here. You know, <laughs> she's on season four of, I mean, she's on all the seasons of House Divided. So if you definitely need to watch all the seasons of House Divided, especially season four, especially season three, because she did a lot of crazy stuff on season three. <laughs> but, you know, you need to watch it all. We talked about a lot of what she did on the show and, you know, you need to watch it. We didn't, de we didn't go into what episode she does it in. So you definitely have nope. to watch it, especially the love scene. Cause you know, that's her most vulnerable. <laughs> just knowing that you can so watch wrong. it. Just know that you can watch it now and be like, oh, she was most vulnerable when she did this scene. So make sure you check out all of House Divided, all four seasons, but make sure you check out season four that's going on right now on All Black. It's the longest running show on All Black right now. So congratulations to that once again. And then, Thank like I said, we look forward to you for your acting, for your music, for producing, for whatever else you got going on. We all here for it, Queen. So I'm going to let Thank you go, you. give you your flowers before we leave. But Bryson Boone, Paul, Demetri McKinney, this is 50. We out of here. Peace. <laughs>